if you have a matrix transformation, we know how to determine the kernel and the range. They are the null space and the column space of the standard matrix. But what about the kernel and range of a linear transformation between two abstract vector spaces? In those cases, we do not have a standard matrix. In these cases, we can still determine the kernel and range, as you will see in the examples in this video. So let's take a look at the transformation from P2 to P1. So two abstract vector spaces defined by, if you have a polynomial, take the derivative. So how does that look like? Take some general polynomial in P2, so a general quadratic polynomial, a0 plus a1 times t plus a2 times t squared. What does the transformation do? Well, it simply differentiates the polynomial. So t of p will be a1 plus 2a2 times t. Let's try to find a null space first. Well, in a null space, that's the space of all polynomials p which are mapped to 0. So for which we have the image of p equals 0, the 0 polynomial. Now the image of a polynomial p, any polynomial p is a1 plus two a2 times t. And that polynomial has to be the zero polynomial if p wants to be in a null space. So this polynomial has to be equal to zero. How can we achieve that? Well, then we have to put both e a1 and a2 to zero. So if you want p to be in a null space, then both a1 and a2 have to be zero. So p2, uh, the, the only possibility we have, so those two terms cancel out, P of t is of the form a0, p of t is a constant, so only constants are mapped to zero, and all constants are mapped to zero. So the kernel of t is the set of all polynomials in p2 that are constant, and we can write it as a span, it's a span of one, span of the uh, constant polynomial. What about the range? How can we find the range? How can we determine the range? Take any polynomial in P1, take any polynomial in the codomain. And let's see whether we can reach this polynomial. So write Q of t equals a plus b times t, a and b arbitrary. Let's see whether we can reach it for all a and b or whether there might be some restriction on a and b. So let's try. So we look for a polynomial P of t that uh, maps to Q of t. So we're looking for some general P. We uh, look whether we can reach our Q over here. Well, we know how to compute the image of P. Image of P equals a1 plus 2a2 times t. So the image of P has to be equal to Q. And can we find such a P? Well, yes, we can. Uh, you see, if you compare, uh, a1 has to be equal to a. So you have to choose a1 equals a and 2 times a a2 has to be equal to b, so you have to choose a2 equals b over 2. This is choice, a1 equals a and a2 equals b over 2. We have indeed that this image of this p maps to q. So p of t equals constant, undetermined, plus capital A times t, plus capital B over 2 times t squared. So this uh, p is mapped to q. Well, you see, you can do that for any q, you can choose any a and b, and still you are p is in your domain, so that means that you can always find a p in your domain which maps to a q. Uh, so your uh, uh, range is all of p1. You can reach all polynomials in p1. Now let's try the second example. t from p1 to r. I now define this. How do we find the image? You just integrate your polynomial from 0 to 1. So Let's use the same strategy. First, let's find out what the transformation does on a general polynomial. So we write p equals a0 plus a1 times t, so a general polynomial in p1. Now let's see what the image is in that case. That means that you have to integrate this from 0 to 1. And that's straightforward. You obtain a0 plus a1 times t. Again, first try to find the kernel. Well, if you want to be in the kernel, then the image of your p has to be equal to zero and now this is the zero of your uh, codomain so it's a number zero uh, so what's the condition can we how can we reach that well if you want to be zero over here so then you, have you need a zero plus a one over two has to be equal to zero so that means that you have a condition on uh, a zero and a one 
uh, for example, a0 equals minus a1 over 2. And that means that your p of t looks like minus a1 over 2 plus a1 times t. These polynomials are mapped to 0, and only these polynomials are mapped to 0. So that means that your kernel of t consists of the polynomials in p1, uh, such that the first coefficient equals minus a1 over 2 plus a1 times t. And you also can write it as a span, as a span of minus 1 half plus t. So that's your kernel. So how do you find the kernel? And you have to figure out what, what polynomials in this case in your domain are mapped to the zero of your codomain. It gives you a condition, and this condition tells you how your kernel looks. We saw that in the first two examples. Then for the range. Then we have to see, uh, to look well, can we reach any number in the codomain or are there any restrictions? So take Q in R in the codomain arbitrarily and the question is can we reach any Q? Or are there restrictions on that? Can we reach only part of the Qs? So we have to look for P such that the image of P equals Q. Well, we know what the image of P is. The image of in general P equals A0 plus A1 over 2. So we have to see whether we can choose A0 and A1 such that A0 plus A1 over 2 equals arbitrary number Q. Well, we can do so there. Are really many choices like A0 equals Q and A1 equals A0 or uh, A0 equals uh, 0 and A1 equals 2Q or a bit more symmetric A0 equals Q over 2 and A1 equals Q. If you put this uh, restriction then the image of your uh, uh, of your p will be q, and your p of t will also form, be will form q over 2 plus q times t. Again, this p is in the do domain of your transformation, so you can reach any q in R with, the, uh, with this particular p. Uh, so that means that your range is again all of R. So how do we find the range of a transformation? Take an arbitrary point in your codomain, and try to figure out whether you can reach this arbitrary point in the codomain by a point in the domain. So you see, also, if you don't have a standard matrix, but still uh, try to determine the, uh, the range and the kernel of your linear transformation.